Hello, brothers and sisters. God bless. Hope your night or day is going good. Everything's going well with you. I know what some of you are thinking. Not another Greg Jackson critique. Not another Greg Jackson example. He just provides so many is the thing. He just provides so many examples through his faulty reasoning. And he does it in videos and he does it in community posts. Here's a clip from a video he's done recently. And I'm not critiquing the whole video. I'm just going to go ahead and critique this clip. And I actually do not plan on spending a lot of time with this video. It's going to be very short. I hope. I don't think it's going to be very long. But it will demonstrate a point with Greg Jackson. So this is a clip where he's talking about salvation. And, and I'm going to go ahead and play it. But apparently it's not to most of the religious world. Why? Because they want to boast. Because of the pride of the flesh. They want to be able to take, you know, they want to get, uh, take um, credit, I guess is the best word, for their salvation. They want to believe that they've had something to do with it. They want to boast, ultimately. But we know there's not going to be any boasting in heaven, right? Because by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should what? Boast. So I don't think there's any coincidence that, you know, Paul used that word by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that word boast in Ephesians 2, 8, 9. There's a lot of boasters. So I don't think it's by coincidence either that under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that Paul uses the word boasting in 1 Corinthians 1, 26 and onward when he says, consider your own calling, brother, and not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to flesh have been called, but God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, the debased and the despised things God has chosen, the things that are not, to nullify the things that are, that no man may boast before God, but by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. So the problem with Greg is he thinks he can define what boasting is, and the Bible defines what boasting is, and it's the fact that if anyone is in Christ Jesus, recognize that it was God's choice, it was God's individual effectual calling, and that by God's doing, we are in Christ Jesus and not our own. If it had to do with the free will decision that anyone could equally make to place themselves in Christ Jesus by their own free will, in other words, anyone can be in Christ Jesus. All they have to do is make the choice, a free will choice, and place themselves in Christ Jesus, then you would have reason to boast. You took part and added something to your salvation that others did not. And if others would have done what you did, they would have been saved as well. Now, because of the pride of the flesh, Greg Jackson ignores this very point in the scripture. And I'm going to play back what he said and play it through to demonstrate the point. But Greg Jackson brings up Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, saying that by grace we have been saved through faith, not of ourselves, but as a gift of God not of works, least any man should boast. And he's saying that, you know, salvation is not of our works, which is absolutely true, so that we shouldn't boast. But we also shouldn't boast because of all the antecedent things mentioned as well, as that we have faith that is not self-originating, it's a gift of God. By grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God and not of works, least any man should boast. So we shouldn't boast in a faith that's self-originating. We shouldn't boast in our works. But when it comes to salvation, we shouldn't boast in our own personal choice. We should boast in God. And we see Paul with that attitude in 2 Thessalonians 2.13, where he says, Brothers and sisters, beloved of God, we're always bound to thank God for you. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and belief in the truth to this he called you through our gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ so you see very clearly in this passage that God chose people to be saved and those people that he chose to be saved he called through the gospel and that calling is an individual a factual personal calling by which when one considers that that God has called some over others and made the choice for them over others that no one should boast that they are in the Lord by their own doing because it was God's doing, it was his calling, consider your own calling, brother, and not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty, according to the flesh, have been called. God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, the debased, the despised things God has chosen, the things that are not, to nullify the things that are, that no man may boast before God, but by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. See, Greg Jackson thinks he can define the terms by which a person can boast and then ignore the biblical terms that says 
God has made the choice. He's made an individual a factual calling and that by his doing, God's doing, we are in Christ Jesus and not our own. So that the one who boasts should boast in the Lord. See, when you're saying it's my choice, I placed myself by my own doing in Christ Jesus, you're boasting before God according to scripture. When we consider this verse in 1 Corinthians one twenty six and onward about the people that God has called, he's called some over others and he's chosen some over others. And by God's doing, he's placed those people into Christ Jesus. And these are the people in 2 Thessalonians 2.13 that according to scripture, God has called through the gospel and has chosen to be saved from the very beginning. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you. From the very beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this, he called you through our gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when it says, to this he called you through our gospel, this calling was only for particular individuals of God's own choosing, the ones God chose from the very beginning to be saved. So boasting before God doesn't have to do only with saying that, look, I'm not saved by my works. I'm not saved by my works. Yes, that's true. And if you said you were saved by your works, you would be boasting before God. But if you also insist that it was your personal free will choice, that placed you into Christ Jesus, you're boasting before God. And what I mean by insistent is if you have been presented with the word of God and you still persist against the scripture that clearly shows that by his own doing, we are in Christ Jesus, that he's called some over others by a personal, individual, effectual choice of God, and you insist that you made the choice and it's by your free will that you're in Christ Jesus, then according to the way the Bible defines boasting, you're boasting before God. So I'll just play the clip slowly through and critique it, and then I'll wrap this up. But apparently it's not to most of the religious world. Why? Because they want to boast, because of the pride of the flesh. They want to be able to take, you know, they want to get, uh, take um, credit, I guess is the best word for their salvation. They want to believe that they've had something to do with it. They want to boast. Let's see, that's the free will position. You think that faith is self-originating, so you have a boasting mentality. You think that anyone could have saved themselves just like you did, but you're the one that did it. And so you think that faith self-originates from yourself. Anyone else could have done it. So you think highly of yourself in the situation. Paul is saying to believers, by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, not to think highly of yourselves and you ought to think, but with sound sober judgment as God has dealt to each one of you a measure of faith. That when it comes to the gift of faith, God dealt it out in measure. It came by measure from God, and he is the one who gets credit for dealing it out. See, it originates from God. If God deals it out, then that shows right there that faith did not self-originate, that it's a gift of God for us who believe so that we cannot think highly of ourselves as though we had this thing that came out of ourselves that anyone else could have had as well, but they chose not to, and so they're not saved. I did what was necessary. They did not. See, Greg is the one who would be taking pride in his salvation, thinking that part of it was due to him. It's not to most of the religious world. Why? Because they want to boast because of the pride of the flesh. They want to be able to take, you know, they want to get, uh, take um, credit, I guess is the best word, for their salvation. They want to believe that they've had something to do with it. They want to boast, ultimately. See, that sounds like Greg. If we consider Greg, he wants to take credit for his salvation by a faith that he believes he self-produced. It's not a gift of God. He believes anyone else could have done it. But he's the one that has done it by which he is now saved. And Greg believes without his free will choice, he could not be saved. So he is taking credit for his salvation. He's believing that he played a part in it. The religious world. Why? Because they want to boast because of the pride of the flesh. They want to be able to take, you know, they want to get, uh, take um, credit, I guess is the best word 
for their salvation. They want to believe that they've had something to do with it. They want to boast, ultimately. But we know there's not going to be any boasting in heaven, right? It's by See, if faith was self-originating and he doesn't believe that it's a gift of God, then he did play a part. He had to bring his faith to the table by which he was saved. He doesn't believe that God gave him a gift of faith by which he saved. He believes that he gave God a gift of faith and now he saved on the basis of the gift of faith he gave God. And according to the way the Bible defines it, if you believe in that scenario and you insist on it, in light of biblical revelation, you are boasting before God. It is by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works. Less See, by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself. What's not from ourself? Faith. It is a gift of God, it says, and not of works, lest any man should boast. So when it comes to salvation, we can't boast in our faith. We can't boast in our works. But Greg thinks that he can get away with boasting in his faith and boasting in his choosing of God and feels perfectly fine that he's not prideful or boastful if, as long as he says he's not boasting in his works. As long as he says he's not boasting in his works, he's not prideful or boastful, yet he doesn't understand the implications philosophically and theologically that he's boasting before God in his own personal choice by which saved him and placed him into Christ Jesus. I'm not making these things up, people, just to be contentious. This is what the Bible says, that God has called some over others. He has chosen some over others, and by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus so that no one would boast in themselves, that you would boast in the Lord when you consider these things, when you consider why you're in Christ Jesus. It wasn't your choice. It was God's choice. It was a personal, individual, effectual calling. So I'm not making these things up to be contentious. These things are in Scripture, that God has chosen some over others. He's called some over others. And by God's doing, we're in Christ Jesus. If you deny this, what happens by implication, as you are boasting before God. By works, lest any man should what? Boast. So I don't think there's any coincidence that, you know, Paul used that word by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that word boast in Ephesians 2, 8, 9. There's a lot of boasters. Yeah, there's a lot of boasters. There's a lot of people boasting in their own personal choice and their own free will by which they're in Christ Jesus. And yet the Bible tells us that it was God's calling and God's choice, and by God's own doing we are in Christ Jesus, so that the one who would boast, boast in the Lord. I know we've covered some of these points before, but it's just so interesting how Greg thinks he can define what boasting is according to Scripture, and actually exclude how the Bible defines boasting, that when you deny the sovereign aspect of salvation, that God has a calling that he has on personal individuals of his own choice and you deny this and you believe that by your own doing you're in Christ Jesus and not God's then you're boasting before God according to scripture when a person is presented with this and then they insist on it then their issue really is with scripture their issue is with scripture and that's what we're presented here today we're presenting here today is scripture to show according to scripture that god has chosen people for salvation he has called them through the gospel an individual effectual personal calling people that god has chosen to be saved and by god's own doing by his own doing he has placed them in christ jesus that the one who would boast would boast in the lord so god bless you brothers and sisters i hope your night or day is going good and everything's going well with you take care Yeah.